uh, use something like a rotating motor or something and a string. And so what I did is I, I thought, you know, to show this to people, I thought I'll take a rotating electrical motor and I couldn't find one. I mean, I had the V8 motor in my van, but that was a little too big. <laughs> so uh, I looked around and I finally found uh, a, an electrical motor, but it was in, inside my razor. So I took my razor apart and I, I, I have pictures of me now, then I, I had to wear, I had to grow a beard because my razor was stuck in my experiment. <laughs> but I took my razor apart and I took the little electrical motor out and I attached a string to it, a fishing line to it. And then on the other side, I attached a little fishing weight uh, that allowed me to hold on to the string and allowed the string to spin at the same time. So I and I and then I turned my razor on. Is there somebody Andy that can turn the lights off here? <coughs> and I don't have my razor anymore because, um, well, you can see I I started shaving again. But uh, I was in a physics conference. And it was hilarious. I was going around. I was going around all these physicists, physicists in this physics conference with my little laser and my little string, trying to explain to them that a, a wave is a 3D vortex. And some physicist that come from Canada saw me doing that, and he had brought this device that he thought was a cool toy. And when he saw me do that, he said, you need this device, and he gave it to me. So since then, I present with this, which is much better than my uh, little razor string. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this in a way so I can still, can, can you pull on that string above your head? There you go. Appreciate. So here, I'm gonna, I orbited the string, and as soon as I put it together, this is what happened. The string self-organized into a vortex, but the vortex was quantized. Can everybody see the two-dimensional waveform here? The 2D sine wave? Okay, well, the 2D sine wave is a 3D vortex, right? We all agree, right? And when it does uh, go into self-organization, it generates very specific quanta. Can everybody see this? These quanta are the particles, and this is the wave. You see? The wave and the particle come together naturally when you have a 3D vortex. You all see what I mean? All of a sudden, it's not either a wave or a particle, it's both in, both in the same dynamic. The particle and the wave. Now, when you disrupt that, it'll balance itself back out, right? Pardon me? When you disrupt it, it'll balance itself right back out. Just like this. Yeah, you can disrupt it, disrupt it, and, and uh, you see, you can change the amplitude, but you can get, like, stable... Chaotic contractions. Yeah, stable standing wave. Like this one. <laughs> and they're very beautiful. As well, they generate really interesting oh, fractal structures in between them, as you can see in the middle there. Are those available in Turkey? I wish. I've never been able to find another one of these. And I looked hard and long. 
And you can continue to create, see this is, let me see, this is a two frequency, right? So again, self-organized. Does that look like anything? Right. Now I had a contact for the pedals or for the lobes in between the intersecting spheres. The spheres are the radiating side of the event horizon. Those radiating spheres intersect creating standing waves that is the electromagnetic field. You see that? And so that uh, you can actually make this the one frequency. Let me see if I can get there's let me spin it up. This is one of the interference pattern. Now a wave of water in the ocean coming onto a peak. Is, it, is the water molecules coming in a spiral? That's right. The water molecules are moving through the wave. You know, like surfers going through the tunnel? The water molecules are going through the wave like this along the shore. Okay. And, and the wave appears to be moving this way towards the shore. But it's actually a vortex. So, um, let me see. You can get, let me see if I can get it. Oh, way up. There we go. Here you get a tetrahedral array of web, of waveforms in the middle. Oh, I lost it. Oh, sorry. It's kind of hard to show to a large audience. You need a camera on it. In any case, uh, you can get all the interference pattern you need, including <laughs> the wave and the particles together, all in one. You don't have to have some weird dichotomy between the two. And if, if you actually can get some really cool stuff. low speed. Here's the interference patterns at slow speed. Isn't this neat? Yeah, it it's organizing because I'm moving it. If I change the wave frequency, right, there's, there's places where the distance due to the length of the of the string will create interference like here but then if i change that link when it's at the right link then it will self-organize and when it does the right the rate of rotations of the motor changes you see and so um and so it has to do with the with the wavelength and the speed of rotation So here is my string theory. <laughs> <laughs> and so it became obvious that the wave and the and the particle are unified when you allow the spherical coordinates of the three D vortex uh, dynamic to be involved. Go ahead. That relationship between the, the frequency and the the amplitude. Perhaps it's, it's escaping me a bit. But is that the same dynamic as as, as on the graph before between the, the the frequency and the radius? I mean, is there yes. A, is there's a correlation there. There's a correlation, absolutely, because it's uh, the radius. Um, the radius and the frequency will dictate the resonance of the system, will dictate the fundamental resonance of a system. So it's either in uh, constructive or destructive resonance. And 
if you uh, if you change the link of the string, you either get constructive waveform or destructive waveform, and the two um, the two generate you know the dynamics of the expansion and the contraction and so on. So yeah, it is definitely related. The uh, the radius of a system and its angular momentum are directly related, and the, its energy output, the surface of the system and the amount of information moving through it is directly related. So it all works together, you're right. Um, so I guess I, I, you know, I was really, you know, I was amazed about that because like, but then I was thinking, okay, you guys, this is where you guys are going to have to do some nonlinear thinking. Because I was thinking,